Yes. 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 Blessings. We are the founders. We are the keepers of the flame. How may we be of service to you? Well, thank you for being here with me. Yes. As you might imagine, I'm full of many questions. Very so I'll go ahead and get started, if I may. Very good. I've heard through many channelings from different types of channels, uh, different stories of the founders and how they manifested into this particular uh, universe. But there's one statement that I'd like to understand better. Yes. It basically said that, um, that you had manifest here by the billions or trillions um, from a universe that had reached completion. Could you better my understanding of what that statement means? When you are an infinite being, an eternal being, you are only going to explore a particular concept or a particular idea in so many ways and then it becomes repetitive. There is no need to continue to go down that particular path and so that is what is meant by a universe coming to its completion. It is that we, all of us who comprise source had explored all of the different ways in which we could explore that particular idea behind that particular universe, you see. And so then it becomes time to explore something new. And my understanding that this universe was created to be more of a template for the human form, the humanoid at least. Precisely. Yes, an exploration of duality. And with the physical as the grounded aspect of it. So the non-physical is just as much a part of the universe as the physical realms. And of course, there are no humanoids in the non-physical realm, but the humanoid expression is the most grounded 
way of having that particular experience of duality. And so that is why you see two arms and two legs and two eyes and two nostrils and so on on the human form. It is a reflection. Hmm. Yes. I could imagine as an infinite being, as source fractionated down into different types of entities, into different density levels, that one would want to explore all different types of ideas and explorations. So yeah. this universe was just another manifestation of another way for a source to express itself. Precisely. There was a, a, a planet that I heard um, I had many names, but one of which was Eden as the template planet for different types of life. Uh, I forgot the star system that it was in. Uh, this was the first iteration in this particular dimensionality, in this particular universe. Yes, we understand. And that uh, many things happened during this process. Um, and other entities from different density levels. Uh, I think it was third density state, and maybe beginning of fourth density were coming. Uh, and there was some duality that spurred. And my understanding is that most of those entities are the ones that spread to Sirius and the Pleiades and the surrounding types of areas that are coming through now and um, helping with different types of ideas and other channelings and other entities. Yes, that is true. Yes. Okay. There's, I, I'm not sure if this would translate over correctly or not, but there is, um, there's an image in the Great Pyramid of Giza that I had come across that was in a secret chamber behind, like, below the Queen's chamber, and it's a fractal image, and it, to me, it looks, it's, it's also a star map, and there's stars on the star map that aren't within our particular spectrum of reality as of yet. I was wondering if you were aware of this, or I'm looking at the energetic representation of this image. Does that translate through it all? Yes. Can you maybe give me a little bit more information on that image? Or when I'm looking at that image, I feel different, and I also feel a lot different energy. I actually have felt different presence, and the stars on the star map, there happens to be the more that I use this or look at this, more stars show up on the star map, like more, I would say, awarenesses or eyeballs showing up, like that they're aware that I'm looking at this image. What you are experiencing is your shift personally, which allows you to perceive more. It is, is a map of the fifth dimension, which has already occurred in the process of descension. So you have had that information available to you because you have had the experience of yourselves as fifth dimensional beings already on your way down to the third. That's interesting because I've heard that a lot of incarnational paths do um, take that trajectory where if you were to look at it in a linear fashion that you have, that this might be one of the last um, linear incarnations that you've already gone through higher density states. Yes. And can you explain, uh, I, 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 for uh, being in a linear, you know, based reality, can you explain better why that actually is um, useful to the greater consciousness to go into that? And it seems backward to us. Is, is there anything that you can elaborate on that? It's necessary. It is necessary for consciousness to make a gradual descent and a gradual ascent. Otherwise, you don't really have the experience of it. You cannot just jump around without having the experience of shifting gradually 
or else you lose all sense of who you are and where you are, and it becomes too disorienting. So in order for consciousness to have made the shift down, so to speak, vibrationally, it was necessary to pass through every dimension. And now you are working your way back up. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. Now, from your standpoint and from your point of view, we are, uh, for a lack of any better words, your children. Yes. We would say that you are extensions of us. Okay. Yes. And I've heard that um, that you're, well, I think all dimensionality, all different types of awarenesses, since we are going through this shift and we've tried it many times from my understanding and this is the first time we've gotten as far as we have, yes. that this is one of the most highly focused places in space and time. Yes. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what that actually means? Does that mean that most awarenesses are focused in this universe or is it on Earth? Or Most in this universe are focusing on Earth at this time. Mm. Yes. And a lot of which are uh, on the moon, like representatives around the moon watching yes. that have been watching over for a while. Yes. That is some of the activity, yes. I know there's multiple, there's so many things going on concurrently. There's uh, there's different starships and different vortex areas, like let's say Bashar and the Sodoma area and others, and there's some interdimensionally within the internal structure, crystalline grid of the Earth, and the, all these different types of ideas going on concurrently. It's sometimes kind of hard to have that all in your awareness of what's going on. But when I look at this image and uh, I spend time and I concentrate on different entities or civilizations, I do feel a lot of feedback from them. Um, I do take some time throughout the day and concentrate and send love and attention to the founders. Is that something that you pick up as a whole? Yes. And how does that translate through? Is it more of a conscious awareness? Is it like an energetic, uh, not, your awareness is much broader than mine. How does that, is there a way you can explain that where it would translate over to me? Yes, if you were to experience a slight tingling sensation in one part of your body. That is what it is like for us. So is that because of the energetics of my energy state is that I'm reaching out and pushing out my energy and I'm just like uh, almost, for lack of better words, like tickling your density level and making you aware that I'm there like as a soft type of hand or something like that? Is that Would that be an accurate representation? That is a wonderful way of putting it, yes. It's kind of stretching out my mind and like flexing my density state a little bit and making myself now... <laughs> Um, is is there a way to build a better conduit between different entities? Is it is it just taking the time to yes, build that type of conduit? Yes, the more attention, the more attention you give, the greater the energy exchange that is going on moves through the cords that connect. Is that the same idea in physical reality of the energetics of magnetizing yourself to the parallel reality and the timeline that you wish to by giving more attention to it? Precisely. Since you're in a different energetic state, you're past the, and I forgot the name of the barrier that's between sixth and seventh density. Uh, there's an energetic barrier between the two that has been described. Um, that means that my energy has to translate between physical and the spirit. Really, there's no there's no difference between the two. They are one thing. I'm spirit projecting a physical reality. So does that yes. mean from the spirit level I'm projecting, or is it coming from both an energetic spirit state, or is it and from a physical density state at the same time? What you can begin to conceptualize yourself as is a point of consciousness that has all, uh, 
kinds of different expressions going on simultaneously. And the expression is dependent upon the filters that the consciousness is being projected through. But it is all you. It is all you in various expressions that are all connected like a symphony hmm. where every part of you is tuning to the conductor. But they are all playing different instruments. Hmm. And for as an example, each and we're talking of the oversoul level is more what we're talking about as a seventh density entity. We would say that even higher than that is the point of consciousness that you are as source energy. Mm. Is what we are expressing here to you. Because even an oversoul has a type of differentiation from another oversoul. I see. So to look more on the level of that I am all the fractals, I contain them all, and that I am the one yes. experiencing itself as many as you are a differentiated fractal from the one. Yes. Just recognizing that we all are one. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now, over the past couple of years, starting in January of 2013, right after the beginning of what I've heard the span or the end of the mind calendar and um, yes. beginning of a new energy state, I hear that the, the moon was there to kind of dampen abilities and to keep energy um, more in check since we have great abilities that we're just learning to flex. Yes. Um, I started to experiencing I started to experience something that only could be characterized in my mind as unconditional love, which has been rising more and more, sometimes randomly, uh, maybe random acts of kindness. Now, is this more energetically representative of my true and natural state as a holistic being? Yes. And can you characterize as a percentage of what I'm experiencing if you're able to feel into my energy state and you do have permission to do so, to see what I have been experiencing in relation to what is to come? To boil it down to a percentage is challenging for us because you fluctuate so much. So at the height of what you have been experiencing of yourself, we would say that it is 20% of what you are capable of in this moment. So there's a lot more behind the door, so to speak. Yes, but then everything will continue to shift. So what you are capable of experiencing of yourself now as a whole being will be shifting and will continue to shift as you continue on your journey. So those parallel realities within physical density would be more commensurate with that type of energy and I will be drawing and attracting other types of experiences like those as a, as a result. Yes. Now, I have been doing an exercise as I'm out in, um, out and about, not necessarily in the home environment, but if I'm in like a grocery store or wherever I happen to be. And I've heard this very lovely way to spread energy but through the crystalline grid and through the matrix is pulling in energy into myself as I'm breathing to anchor myself into physical reality and extending um, my diamond light body, light body, auric field out and saturating the area with this unconditional love that I've been um, feeling as much as possible. And I do feel quite a bit of personal upliftment during this process. What does that actually 
physically doing to the crystalline grid that we're experiencing now? How does that actually impact um, the specific geographics of that area and maybe collective consciousness and the earth as a whole? Well, it is you doing your part. It is you playing your part in that moment. And so the impact that you have is more on the experiential level for you. You do not need to do anything to make anything happen. But when you follow your bliss in the way that you are, in engaging in these types of activities, you change the way you are experiencing all of that. In other words, you can have a purer experience of what is happening with the shift. Or you can, you can continue to cling to that which is familiar, to that which is solid, to that which is shiny and new in the physical and have a more unpleasant experience of the shift. So that is what you are really shifting, is how you are making this transition for yourself and making it easier on yourself to do so by using these tools. So it's, it's really about the individuated experience. And yes. Uh, I was actually just thinking today um, that, and this is as a collective agreement, and this is the game that we've been playing to come to the place that we are right now, is that we generally will circumvent what we would perceive as our own needs to maybe have the needs of others fulfilled. And it really does come down to that there's an infinite amount of abundance. There's a, you're an infinite being. You can manifest anything that you want. And it's attending to your own needs should be really first and foremost. Well, again, this is one of those things where it really depends on where you are in the moment. If you need to take care of yourself in the moment, then that is where your energy is most appropriately directed. And when your needs are met, that is when you have the option of seeking to hoard more of what you need or to create more comfort for yourself, to surround yourself with more and more security, more and more walls in between you and the rest of the collective, or you have the option of getting out and connecting with others and spreading some of that which you have discovered within yourself that is beneficial to others. So ultimately it takes that attention to self when necessary in order for you then to have something to give, to have something to spread around. So it is a balance as with all things. Yes. And that is the human experience. That is the that was the whole point of coming for polarity is to to go through those processes. Yes, to give yourself the choice in that moment. And I have the following conversations with a lot of people. Uh, why would a why would an infinite being want to crystallize down into human form and put great limitation and go through all these trials and tribulations? And they, well, why not? If you are an infinite being, that is another aspect, another extension. That's if, if all things will play out eventually, since there is all eternity to play them out, then why wouldn't that be another expression that you would want to play out and bring a whole bunch of your friends to come play that game with? Yes, there's nothing else to do. <laughs> exactly. There is nothing else to do. Yes. I mean, you would have to play out all expressions. And I'm understanding, just as a beginning understanding, that this is what we're doing here impacts the whole of creation. I don't quite understand all of what that statement means, but I'm starting to get a glimpse if I do hold all things and that everybody is 
it's not necessarily feeding off of my experiences, but they are in, they are sharing them energetically that if there are conflicts, if there are things that we are resolving a lot of things that, you know, we're, we're showing that things could be resolved and we're showing ways that maybe conflicts that do exist and have existed could be resolved. Not necessarily even just within our own physical construct, but within others. Yes. What you demonstrate to yourself in those moments is how gratifying it feels to you to be of service to others. That is what you are demonstrating to yourself. It is not that anything needs to be done in order to ensure that it will be a successful mission for the collective of humanity or the collective of this universe. Because all of that is guaranteed. But these individual experiences that you have are giving you the opportunity to experience what it is like to be of service to the whole. Now, I've heard that there are seven different entities um, that lent their DNA, and these could be characterized very likely as a lot of the descendants from the original Eden, the ones that had spread to the different star systems. Yes. So even in the original experiment, um, they spread out and lend um, other entities their DNA, like, for instance, aspects of the greys, which have their own DNA that they've lent to create some of the hybrids, the yeah. five hybrid races that are starting to make their presence known to yes. us as well. Yes. So it's interesting, um, just as as a creator from yourself, as coming into this universe and creating beings and having them uh, having great conflict and having them spread out and then having this earth experiment and other experiments in this universe, they've actually, it, that it's, it's spreading further and further and further, you know, those particular civilizations are huge and are very loving, have very loving expressions from my understanding. And they impact many, many, many worlds as first contact specialists. Um, and they are pruning us to be first contact specialists as yes. well. So yes. Because after a while, it becomes more interesting for you to explore more of who you are through the exploration of the other entities that you share this galaxy of yours and this universe with. To have some diversity. Well, my understanding is that the soul group that came to incarnate on the earth incarnated in other parallel densities and eventually came into the dead end realities that would be known as the greys. And then they came and they're making hybrid children, which will also live in our density state coming into the next thousand years. And they also with us lent their DNA to make the hybrids, the five hybrid races that exist now that are starting to make their presence aware. Yes. And that was an agreement as a soul group before even carnations. And then we're using these particular worlds to play out different types of ideas and different types of roles. So, for yes. instance, you know, um, play a role out on Earth and maybe in uh, the Essasani or the Yael civilization, these types of ideas, and to have different points of views all together, which is uh, – I'm starting to get a glimpse as to how – creation crystallizes and expands and this has happened over and over and over again in different types of ideas and dimensionality that i would imagine that i can even postulate at this point Correct. in time Correct. infinitely on and on and on yes there's i do have one curiosity and i and this is it's been stated that the human consciousness can't quite yet comprehend um when, let's say, we go through this thousand-year span on the Earth of peace and we transition into the the sixth hybrid race, yes. uh, 
along with the other five hybrid races to combine to one hybrid race. Um, there's another that's been characterized as maybe seventh heaven as the seventh hybrid race. This yes. is, I'm just guessing as a characterization that this density state will be more of a simultaneous density state where you're aware of all different densities simultaneously, or again, it was stated that it would be hard for us to comprehend this particular density state. I just wondered if you could maybe, if you're able to convey it in something that I could understand, because I'm curious. <laughs> yes. Well, your way of looking at it is correct in that once you reach a certain point in physicality, you then merge with non-physicality. You then become non-physical. But you are merging the physical with the non-physical. And that creates that seventh hybrid race in a way that you have not yet experienced the merging of the physical and the non-physical. And from that place, you are able to experience all densities because you are comprised of both physical and non-physical. So this would be a new type of being altogether up to this point. Yes, it would be one of complete balance. That sounds like fun. Yes. Sounds, so basically you have gone through, you would contain all the polarities, all the different civilizations, all the density states. So you've you played out so many roles that you would have the ability to even create new types of realities and places that would be beyond comprehension for most entities in this space and time. Correct. So almost like a new creator yes. of different types of Yes. Will this be one individuated entity or would it still be, uh, or one entity or would it still be unique individuated entities or is that really? It would it's, be it's, unique, or does it... new unique individuated entities but less than what you have now. Okay. So it might be like a shared consciousness like the SSANI. Yes, you will have less diversity because there will be so much more unity. Now, I've heard the, the term the Seven Sisters. Is that um, like a nickname for the seven different civilizations or entities that gave their DNA? Well, it is used to describe the Pleiadian star system. Hmm. Okay. Now, I've heard that Bird's song actually help. I would imagine there's a lot of other mechanisms in place as well, but the songs of birds and other animals actually hold the fabric of nature together in the physical density. We would say that they assist. So they're like in a, a harmonic that reinforces the crystalline matrix. Yes, that is a wonderful way of putting it. Yes, but it's not as though if all birds stopped singing, nature would collapse on itself. I got you. So they have a unique contribution, but they're not like a, a clinch pin to holding everything Correct. together. Correct. Yes, nothing is that significant. In itself. Now, is there... Am I speaking to a unique individuated entity or am I speaking to like a, a large aspect or collective or am I speaking to everyone? We are the collective known as the founders. Okay. Yes. And how many are in that collective? It's not possible for us to really individuate ourselves at this point hmm. and do a head count. <laughs> okay. 
think of us as infinite. Mm. And you've played many roles and you've been in many universes and played out many games with each other. As we continue to do so, yes. And in you're doing that simultaneously. I would imagine this yes. particular universe is not the only game that's being played concurrently. Correct. Since it does all happen simultaneously. Yes. So it is a unique individuated frequency of source energy. And this whole collective is been merged into a particular frequency. Yes. Okay. And then I'm on the whole everything and then I'm experiencing myself as a unique individuated frequency at this moment in time. And yes. I'm starting to feel a lot more than that and shifting out yes. of that more. But yes, indeed. Still, yes. Still, yeah, still anchored in space and time. Correct. When you okay. are awake, yes. Okay. And then during astral states, during what we, we, we would call sleep is recharge time and then yes. time to play out different experiences and maybe even be away for times that we couldn't even phantom and come back and have unique experiences in, in what, we, we, what we could understand as time since you're in a timeless state at that particular moment. Yes. So you can go and have all these different experiences with a whole bunch of your friends and come back and dreams could be energetically representative within the physical matrix of what your consciousness could be aware of. And you just wanted to give yourself an aspect of that experience because you thought it might be useful for you within the, the physical experience you're having. Yes, because your mind likes to be a part of it, all of it. And to get information even through its unique filter, even though it's not necessary. It's not necessary for you to know what you have experienced, but it's more fun to get a glimpse of it through the dream interpretations. Mm. And everybody will do that in their own unique ways, whatever they think is as best representative for them. Okay. Yes. Now, the, there's something in science that uh, always kind of was a curiosity and fascinated me. Um, in many scientific formulas, the, and, and I, I'm starting to get an idea why this needs to be, the infinity symbol has to be a part of the energy equation or the equation breaks down and doesn't work. For instance, the inflation theory and the Big Bang. There's like the Big Bang theory and there's an inflation theory. And if you add the infinity symbol, you postulate basically there's an infinite amount of parallel realities happening concurrently, which just so happens to be a very close energetic representation of what is actually going on. Um, is that because – is that uh, is that like a signpost that we put there or is that just actually how the mathematics has to energetically represent itself in the physical grid? that infinity has to be a lot of times be representative to pan the equation out? Yes. It, you are not allowed to play small. <laughs> when you are conceptualizing with mathematics that which is non-finite. In other words, you have an equation like 2 plus 2 equals 4, there's only so much you can do with that. But you have equations where you are factoring in the entire universe. You are not allowed to think in small terms or in finite terms to play around with those concepts. Mm. It doesn't serve you. So it is kind of like a, a small clue as well concurrently. It's like, well, it all breaks down unless you put the infinity symbol, whether you want to call that God or yourself or a higher power or Yahweh. Yes. Then it's kind of like a small clue at the same time. Yes, indeed. Mm. Yes. Now, as far as um, healings, I've been hearing different channels uh, and different ideas as to cellular structure and there's this mechanism during cell division that 
is basically making a cellular inquiry and it's asking the same or different, the same or different. And if it's instructed by the conscious mind to be different, that you can instruct it to go and do some Akashic record mining and or at least reprogram it to a place where this next generation of cells is more representative of what you're thinking, whether it be healthier cells or what have you. Uh, is there any recommendations as to to sustain and to trigger this mechanism as much as possible without having to have conscious thought of it? Can you set an intent so that it actually, that mechanism is reprogrammed so that it actually is looking to always have better generation of cells than the last? Well, your cells know what they are doing. So you don't really have to direct the cells so much in terms of knowing what it is that the cell needs to do. What you can do is you can tune into your cells, into their wisdom. You can become more of a conscious part of the process that is underway. And you can feel, then, the process occurring, which gives you a different experience of what is going on. And that makes your evolution on the macro level and on the micro level more enjoyable. To be a conscious participant in the process. Yes, to tune in to what is already happening and to do so with an acknowledgement of these beings called yourselves. And they all have their own consciousness and they all know what they're doing and they're yes. all, gen in general, unless impeded, are looking for better energetics to the next yes. cycle. Yes. So you can either ignore them, get in their way, or be a conscious participant. Mm. And that's more of the idea of being a fifth density being is to be more holistic and being more conscious as a whole being. Yes, uh, to pay more attention, to be more aware, to notice the connections that are all around you. You know, I was, uh, I was in my place in New York and I would go out during the summertime and I would water and um, this was when I first started becoming more aware of myself and listening to a lot of different channels and getting a lot of information that was new and I, I could absolutely swear that there was this small poor little tree out around the back that never got any water and he would actually almost scream energetically to go and be watered and he got such a tremendous amount of satisfaction and love from this tree when I actually would go and water him. Yes. Is that, that's the type of idea we're talking about? Yes, indeed. To just... acknowledge the fact that you are that tree and that tree is you. Yes. Yes. No separation. And that they are equal. Yes. So listening to those types of ideas and being more within the excitement, energetic entity is, uh, and processing through your heart, I would add that the heart is more energetically representative of, who I, I guess you could say, your higher self, or does it really go up to more of a higher density state than that? Well, start out with feeling your higher self in your heart. And know that you are infinite going inward as well as going outward. So there's no limitation there. But from where you are, moving into the higher self is the most appropriate way to go. And to get, just get a sense for anyone who might be listening to this in the future, just as um, to, to get a taste of the simultaneousness of existence that it is quite possible that some of the people that I have had conversations with uh, in a channeling state and or have listened to that are in higher density states 
could very well be other aspects of myself that were in those density states working their way down to this current density state as we originally talked to in the beginning. Is that Would that be characterized correctly? Yes. So I could actually have been speaking quote unquote to myself um, in another multiple simultaneous lifetime yes. that was experiencing me in a lower density state. Yes. Just as you are experiencing me in a different density state, I am still an aspect of you. Yes. Uh, more, more directly as an idea of, of being children, yes. since we are your creation, so to speak. Yes, you are extensions of who and what we are. Hmm. And uh, would you have any words to characterize your feelings for your children at this point in time? I mean... I know that we're just starting to realize who and what we are, and this this is a, a very large transitional time. But I can't imagine I'm the only one reaching out at this point in time. Correct. It's got to be somewhat satisfying to have. It. And, you know, I would imagine you've lost most of your judgment, but you still have all of your love there. To, to feel the love from your children start to come back to you um, after all this time. It gives us what you would call pride. Hmm. But of course, we do not have the same experience of that emotion that you have. It's softened. There's like yes. shades of gray instead of yes. vivid colors. Yes. Okay. So we are always proud but the pride feeling, if you can call it that, is amped up just a bit. <laughs> well, I do thank you for my existence and my experience. and We thank uh, you for your existence <laughs> as you allow us to experience reality in a different way. Now, this, this idea of the seventh hybrid race, um, yes. other civilizations are going to join that besides the hybrids? Will the founders be joining that type of idea as well? Will it be more of a, a lot of different civilizations coming into that? Or is that more the humans and the hybrids? It will be the humans and the hybrids working together to create... But of course, we are always around. Okay. Yes. And so it's it's interesting that, and as as time goes on, the seeds more and more of my consciousness, the simultaneously of, of existence, because I could just as easily be, um, and I am having experiences within the Yael and the Pla Yael and yes. the Essasani, and to, to to be able to have different points of view, so that when that eventuality came for the seventh hybrid race, it could be a well-balanced entity at that moment in time when that did come to pass. Correct. So the agenda, if there is, you know, an agenda besides having fun and joy was all these, so, so no, nothing happens by accident. There's a lot of pre-planning I would imagine that goes in and, and, I, and we're, we're looking at it from a backward standpoint because we are experiencing it from this density state, but everything was contrived to get to the possibility of having a particular outcome, and that for this incarnational soul group was to have this type of um, seventh hybrid race. It is part of the intention and part of the decision that you have made as a collective to do this. So you may start out with a certain intention and then you may decide at some point that you're going to go in another direction. But ever since you have crossed the December 21st, 2012 marker, you have begun the, you have made that decision more. That intention has now become a choice. 
that the human collective has made to continue on in the ascension process. So you can liken that to a snowball going downhill in physical reality where it has energy and momentum to it and uh, the likelihood of the direction that's being gone now as a collective would be toward that direction as a collective agreement. Okay. Yes. Inevitable is how we would describe it. Inevitable. That sounds rather absolute. So basically that was the demarcation point to see for two choices to see if energetically we could make it to that without yes. having any accidents, so to speak. And B, it was a marker that we had to give ourselves some kind of marker in physical reality or else it might not have ever gotten done. Yes. Now there are other realities as you understand that are not making that decision, hmm. but everyone in this reality is making that decision. Now, I understand this is the first time that um, a planet has uplifted concurrent with the population on it. Yes. And that there's two versions of the Earth that are in the span of time between now and the beginning of 2020. There'd be a third density and then there'd be a fourth density or fifth dimensional type of idea. And that entities are choosing between the two during this span. Well... In a way that I can understand it. Yes. <laughs> because I'm sure it's complicated. It is very complicated. And <laughs> you are seeing that the idea of two Earths, where one part of the billions of you that are inhabiting are going to stay on one Earth, and the other part is going to move to a different Earth, you can see how... The predictions of that are not coming true. And how that is very good news for everyone because there doesn't need to be a big catastrophic event to keep those who want to stay in third dimension or third density reality there and to allow the rest to ascend so it is very good news that you are not actually seeing those types of occurrences that would keep a portion of the population down so to speak so the energy is rising and rising and rising faster and more entities are deciding to play the game of ascension rather than to stay into the monkey mentality so to speak and throw yeah. things at each other and blow stuff up yes yes Precisely. even though there is that expression that there might be a small portion that stay in a density state that would do that so that others can join them and still play out those types of limitations yes yes because as you have said all time is happening now so it will never cease to exist that possible reality for someone to inhabit so if somebody wants to go and play that game, it's, it's available because yes. everything is available. Every possibility, yes. every potential. Yes. And that's, um, once I came to the realization that I was an immortal being in a timeless reality and that I'm projecting within my greater consciousness a crystalline grid to go and play in, and it is infinite and it is all there right now that you could choose whichever one that might be energetically representative, it started to make a lot more sense. (laughs) A lot of what was going on in these types of conversations, like for instance, um, uh, Trev could come through or Cryon or any number of entities could come through and be other and have other multiple simultaneous lifetimes. The logic was that how could they know or realize where we were if they were in a different so-called time frame than we are, how could they even realize that where we were or physically be able to reach through um, through a channeling type of state if it wasn't multiple simultaneous, if everything Correct. wasn't happening now? Correct. Yes. So the, lo- the logic of that very much vetted out. Yes. Well done. <laughs> the conversations that I have with most other people when I explain it in a watered-down version of that, it does seem to help considerably in 
aiding their consciousness to come to better ideas in terms of what might be possible. And I think it's because the truth does bleed through energetically. And on some level, they're recognizing what's being stated. Yes, they're recognizing it as something that resonates with something that they've always known. Mm. Yes. So you are triggering something inside of them. Mm. A recognition of knowledge on some level. Yes. Because truth, you know, the truth will still trigger other aspects of their consciousness, whether it be subconscious or other. Precisely. So I would imagine, um, and I've heard that basically there is a section of the civilization, I don't know, light workers, whatever you want to call them, that actually is holding a particular frequency and helping with the upliftment, uh, not necessarily, you know, better than others, but that's kind of more taking it upon themselves to be the holders of the energy and this information and knowledge. Cause there will be a time coming up when there'll be a lot more in the way of disclosure and a lot more people will be seeking information. Yes. There's a lot, a lot of people that are on the forefront, let's just say of this type of information. Yes. Um, there are all types of ways that beings are assisting playing their part and giving themselves the experience of making a difference so there's nothing to worry about enjoy yourself yes be of service when it's and uh, you know it's 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 uh, to have the human experience of in my case for 40 something years in, in the way of linear time and all at once have an experience ushered upon you that says, oh, everything that you knew probably wasn't true, even though um, you're starting to believe in different types of things. And here's what you actually are, is, I will say, a unique experience upon creation. I can't imagine that that is an experience that, that many entities within creation actually have to come Correct. through a density state and Correct. to play the monkey game and yes. to be violent necessarily. And I wasn't necessarily always violent, but you know, I, I had a temper when I was a kid here and there, like most yes. people did yes. and to play these types of roles for each other. And now to recognize more of what I am and to realize that more and more every day. And that was the game that we set out to play. Yes. And I thank you for setting us on that path. I think that's, that's not, I'm not sure that was your original intention, but it's interesting how that has unfolded and how that has served so many entities um, in this dimensional construct. Yes, it has been fun for has everyone it, involved. Did yes. it play out to your, not, I'm not going to use the word expectation, but for the original construct that you made as to what it's developed in now, is it this idea of collective agreements and deciding to choose a direction as a collective and deciding that it develop differently over time? Or did you have the idea that this is kind of what it would turn into as, as linear time went on for this timeline? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You have to think that you're aware of multiple timelines. simultaneously. Yes. Yes. So you're aware of all timelines simultaneously? Yes. Ah. <laughs> yes. Obviously, to the, to, to the third density, fourth density state, that's kind of daunting. But Correct. I'm starting to feel them more and more, like yes. a choice. Yes. Is that more in the idea of choosing your excitement and getting um, more and more information to be able to make better choices the next time that you can feel more the path that would be more of an exciting path? Correct. We would say that if we were to sum up what it is that your role is at this time, it is to follow the feelings that you have rather than to listen to the mind that's telling you what you need to do, what you should do, what's going to be most beneficial but instead, if you follow the feelings, which can be illogical at times, mm. you are bound to make more 
of an informed decision because you are utilizing more than just the limitations of the physical mind. So you're exercising more of a fifth dimensional state when you're just using and processing through your heart and, yes. and, and reaching in for a feeling because the human mind was not designed to know what's going to happen with an infinite amount of parallel realities. It's just not yes. capable of processing that. And yes. that feeling is your demarcation to a timeline that would be the most joyous for what you decided to experience in this lifetime. Yes, precisely. And that actually is starting to make a lot more sense because it's, if you were aware of all things simultaneously, that wouldn't be a third or fourth density, fifth dimensional type of experience. That would be a different dimension. <laughs> and so yes. you differentiated yourself down and your feelings as with all things. Now, what about, so, what about some of these emotions and things that we've been dragging along all this time and I, I know can weigh heavy on the body and um, can weigh into different um, energy centers in the body, different vortexes, different chakras. As far as clearing those as time goes on, is there any, I know there's no one way for any particular because we're all unique and, and, and different, but is there any good clearing methods besides following your excitement and following this line of energy yes. to start dropping some of these other things? Yes. Habits. As you accept them, as you allow them to be as they are, that is the clearing process. As you release judgment of yourself for having had the feeling and release the judgment of the feeling then it is liberated. It becomes unstuck. But it will continue to pop up until you give yourself the experience of acceptance and have compassion for yourself while you are having your meltdown. <laughs> so be easy on yourself during yes. the process. Yes. I think our expectations, I think we're pretty hard on ourselves majority of the time. Yes. Agreed. This is a, um, I've heard a unique and difficult task to go through. And energetically, it is, if you were to look at it from an energy state, it's just insane to the human mind what's actually physically and the crystalline part of the, in, in the body and energetically like revitalizing your energy body at the same time. Um, and the energy that's coming through during this, what would be deemed as a span that the energy is stepping up every year and more and more on a daily basis and yes. more high energy photons on the earth and yes. different things happening and entities also aiding in this balance. So, uh, lots of rest, lots of water and yes. be easy on yourself. Precisely. Yes, that is the prescription for an enjoyable experience of the shift. So don't be in a hurry to be anywhere, do anything Correct. To, to recognize what might not be there. Just kind of enjoy yes. it as much as you possibly can. Yes. <laughs> I think that's definitely something that I could take as personal advice. I've yes. This energy, and I've been actually feeling some of this unconditional love during this latter part of our conversation, and uh, I'm not sure what type of energy comes through during these conversations, but it certainly does feel like there's quite a bit of energy coming through at yes. this particular time. Yes. Now, is that something I know Bashar had um, characterized that he was giving a certain percentage, you know, that, that you're only communicating with a certain amount of his energy and only so much is coming through because it would be too much within the physical matrix yes. even at this point in time that I, I'm probably only – experiencing a very small percentage, uh, a fractal amount of your energy at this point in time. Yes, you and the channel both. Gotcha, because yes. it has to come through him first. Is that the idea? Well, the idea is that he could not handle more than what he is handling mm. of us, you see. That's the same type of idea of pushing out, um, like a balloon pushing out in a density state and just starting to touch the, the bottom parts of what your density state is. There's only so much room in that balloon. It's at capacity. Yes. Okay. Yes.
So you're purely energetic at this point in time? We would characterize ourselves more as consciousness than energy at this point. I'm confused at the differentiation between like uh, just pure consciousness then. So you can not be representative of any density state. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Consciousness can be less polarized. And that is what we experience ourselves as a less pol. The more polarized, the denser the energy. The less polarized, the less it becomes an energetic experience. That's what, that is why, as you move up in densities or dimensions, you have less physicality. You have more of a sense of yourself as consciousness and less of a sense of yourself as a physical being until you come back into knowing yourself as pure consciousness, which has really only one way of being, and that is unconditional love. So uh, there was, speaking of multiple timelines and the availability of all of those concurrently, there is something that I heard that, I don't know, I, was, I wasn't necessarily confused on, but maybe you could help elaborate on, is that um, there's different factions of the greys, and some of which are responsible for making the hybrid children and the, the different um, hybrid civilizations um, but there's also factions, you know, that might not have our best interests at heart yes. and that might tend to want to interfere with this timeline uh, for their own agenda. And I, I heard, and I don't, I don't know, I think it was maybe the entity known as D, if, if it was given a name at this particular time during this particular channeling, that the universe herself was not going to allow that to happen. Uh, I didn't understand that in the context that it was spoken that the universe would have something to do because uh, obviously it's it's happening and that the universe is a sentient being experiencing all things within it. Yes. Um, was is that like a conscious decision that the universe made that, that there was a decision and collaboration that there was no more tinkering, no messing around with these timelines that we should be allowed to do what would naturally evolve. It was individuals who were making that decision for the universe. So the universe working through individuals made that decision to put a stop to it. Hmm. Policing it. Policing itself, so to speak. But yes, that is in the particular reality that was being discussed. Gotcha. Not in every reality. Well, it's good to know that we are um, well watched over. I understand that yeah. you know, there are people that would not always have, because this is a polarity universe, I mean, you're going to have some polarity happen from time to time, people tinkering outside of what they might should be tinkering. So. Yes. Now, are, are, there, are there entities that have this particular charter? To keep an eye on things? That is what brings them the most joy. Mm. So it all works out. So that everyone can be following their joy, their excitement, their bliss. And have everything be taken care of. And that is happening on every level. Since we differentiated ourselves from that type of idea and played out the great limitation, the the more fifth density type of reality, the next state for the next hundred years is as a civilization, um, monetary systems not necessarily vetting out in the way that they are now, and the the what people's excitement are in the moment is the monetary system and what they do 
everybody moves forward as one giant collective, as one excited thing, and each one doing what's exciting to them, and they work as one unit, and then that actually moves everything forward in a more momentous and faster and faster direction because there's less polarity and then less polarity and more joy and everybody's doing what excites them the most. And it is different for each unique individuated soul, which might have pre-agreements before incarnating um, in an energetic state so that everybody could work as one collective. Is that a better understanding of the mechanics of it? And as you say it, you can feel how complex it is. It for is. the mind to even grasp, mm. you see. Which is why when you boil it down to follow the feeling, it becomes much easier for you to then find your place in all of it and know what you are supposed to do next. And there's no wrong way because you are an infinite being. And yes. even if you were to do something contrary to what you might have wanted in this lifetime, that it's still a learning and still a process and something that you will take away with you. So yes. there's no wrong way to do anything. Yes, indeed. Yes. Now, based on the questions that I've asked, is there any other elaborations that you would have at this time or anything else do you think that energetically that I might have an interest in? We believe that you would benefit from feeling yourself as an infinite being. And so tuning yourself to the concept of infinity because you do have such a desire to understand all of these concepts to give yourself the experience of infinity as a feeling as a frequency you will then have an easier way of conceptualizing it, breaking it down into terms that are understandable to your physical mind. So just intend to know yourself as infinite and feel what that is like for you. Okay. Yes. So truly nothing is ever lost if I'm in this lifetime and yes. I want to experience something in particular, it might already be playing out in a multiple simultaneous lifetime as a greater expression so that it could be developed out as an idea and yes. then whatever was needed in this lifetime will play out in its own way. So yes, it's interesting. Yes. That's a lot for... That's a, a, a lot for someone who's experienced um, a, this particular density state and to come into this idea. It's, it's, it's interesting to toil over those types of ideas. And I seem to take to them very well as far as the temporal mechanics of it is that it, it makes a lot of sense. Yes. Yes. It is very logical. Yes. Otherwise, if it was all time and there was differentiation in, in the way of linearity, then nothing would ever get done. Yes. <laughs> yes. There would be no ability to share or have concurrent information from yes. other lifetimes or have shared skills or any of these types of ideas. Yes. Yes. Hmm. It is all perfectly woven together. It is. Yes. And all of this is being concurrently experienced as one thing, like the one thing that is yeah. conscious of itself. Yeah. All that is, is conscious of myself and you on some level. Yes, indeed. Mm. Yes. And I'm not sure this would even translate into an understanding, but are there entities that speak with what could be called prime creator? Is that just too much energy? Is it always a differentiation of prime creator? Yes. Uh, one of those label? percentages again. Yes. Mm. Yes. Indeed. So like, 
like the archangels, for instance, might be able to have more communications than yes. other density states. Yes, indeed. Yes. Because they're only once removed, from my understanding. Correct. And they don't incarnate in the way that other entities do. Correct. Okay. Well, I'm generally not at a loss for questions. However, I... I, I want to honor Daniel's time as well. I'm getting the sense that he might have things to do. Yes. So um, I, I'll go ahead and close this out. If there's anything else that you would like to share, please do so. Otherwise, um, I will thank you very much, and I, I sure I will speak with you again. Yes, we are showering you with blessings, and will continue to do so. And we appreciate the opportunity to come forth in this way, to communicate with you in this way. We are the founders. We are the keepers of the flame. Mm -hmm. 